Welcome back to Azure Terraformer. This is part three of my GitHub Actions and Azure Functions series, where we implement a CI CD pipeline for Azure Functions.NET 6. Uh, this episode, I'm going to be working a little bit in Mac and a little bit in Linux. I'm going to be using Visual Studio on Mac to set up a function app and getting it set up so that we can just deploy that baseline function using our existing CD pipeline. So without further ado, let's get started. So here I'm in Visual Studio and I'm just gonna go to my Azure function um, project and I'm gonna create a new one. It's gonna be, you know, the long-term, .NET 6 long-term support. And I'm just gonna make it an HTTP trigger just to keep things simple. Well, okay, let's just call it GitHub crawler. How about that? So it's gonna go into the source folder in the .NET folder. There's gonna be a root solution called GitHub crawler. Um, GitHub crawler.solution, GitHub crawler.csproj. That's kind of the standard .NET solution structure. Let's just go with that. Okay, and so you can see here, the, the standard template for a, an HTTP trigger uses a static class and a static method. I'm not super keen on that, but I'm not changing that today. We're just gonna leave that as is. It also does this really odd thing where it you know supports multiple verbs from the same function not going to do that um, and it gives a, de a, a null route um, not going to do that um, so there's a lot of things in here i don't like this is uh, you know a boilerplate template what are you going to do um, so I, th I think right now i'm i'm totally fine i'm just going to build this and then i'm probably going to go just commit this code and make sure that it gets in there i've actually also opened up this code base um, in here um, in, in VS Code, just so that I can see what I'm going to be adding. And so, um, you know, I, there's there's a bunch of hidden things that I, that I want to set up my git ignore. I don't want to include the VS directory. So I'm going to need to go fix that. Let's go look at my git ignore. And basically anything that's in that hidden uh, VS directory, and uh, I'm going to, I want to ignore that. Um, what else? I think, I think bin and object are already set up because I suspect there's um, an additional git ignore. Yeah, so it dropped its own git ignore in this, uh, in this directory, which is causing the bin and the object directories, which are intermediate compile artifacts that are generated that you don't want to check in, um, included there as well. But for some reason, via the, the hidden VS directory is not included. I don't know why I, I don't like checking in the VS directory. Um, if, uh, if, if I'm wrong there, you know, let me know because uh, I, uh, I, my information could be out of date there, but I, I, I see no reason why because um, it's all user preferences and things like that. It, his, you know, it should not be checked in at all, like cache and things like that. So I'm not sure why that's not included in the default git ignore, um, but, I, but I always add it myself anyway. So anyways, this is, uh, this is it. Let's just, let's just add baseline as your function uh, code base and let's let's get back let's get back to work so now from my code base here um, in in Linux um, I should be able to do git fetch all and pull in those changes that I made from my Mac which now includes this solution project here so now what I need to do is now wouldn't it be nice to have a little CI process where I can go make sure all the things are working. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a little CI process where we're, so I'll call this CI. And to, to, save, to save some effort here, I'm just gonna drop this stuff in here. And I think this is correct, right? We have .NET and we have GitHub crawler. So basically anytime you change some source code in the, in the in our .NET repository, we want it to go do the things. And so um, now I need to set up my jobs and my first job is gonna be build. And um, I suppose I suppose this, this makes sense, but like I'm only running on one operating system. Um, so I probably, I probably don't need that. Um, let me just, let me just drop this. We'll get into matrix stuff later. And so now let me throw in a step here. And so this step is just going to check out my code and set up.net with the specific version that I set. 
And then let's just let's just do something very vanilla like install install some dependencies, okay? And we got to make sure everything's lined up. I could probably extract this as the working directory, but let's just get this going. So um, it's going to go on push and pull requests. So add CI. A few moments later. Yep. So I think we're good. We ran .NET restore. So I think like all of our paths and all that are working out good. Let's add a build and then let's add um, unit tests. And I am adding a little bit of a filter on here so that I only run X unit tests that have a particular attribute. I'll go more into that later. Um, it's just something that I do. Um, I could probably extract this as an environment variable because basically we're going to be compiling, we're compiling code, doing these .NET command line operations from the same location over and over again. There's no, there's no need to repeat ourselves. So let's go watch the GitHub action, see what happens. Now this is my CD pipeline. My CD pipeline is still triggering because the GitHub workflow, um, but I'm not too worried about that. So here we go. I've got .NET restore, .NET build, .NET test, and we are off to the races. Wunderbar. So let me, uh, I am going to do one thing. I'm going to go and add, I am going to go add a unit test project. So I've updated all my code there. Now I'm going to go add a new project here. Um, and it's going to be a X unit test project and it's going to be .NET 6. Got to make sure everything is .NET 6. We'll call this GitHub crawler dot unit tests. And inside here, I'm just going to add a trait attribute with a category of uh, unit. And so basically this is going to allow my little unit test here to execute. I'm just going to do something really stupid. <laughs> Never do this. Okay. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes, I want you guys to see that um, my test is running and my test is passing. Um, and let's go check and make sure I'm happy with all the files that I'm checking in. Does not look good. Um, I want to, I want to give, I do not want all these object directories. So we need, not sure why these aren't being picked up, but need to make sure that we don't add those things because those are bad. Okay. So then I should be good here. Let's go add X unit test project for unit tests. And let's go watch our C C I C our let's go watch our C D or I'm sorry. Let's go watch our C I pipeline and see what it does now. And we should see something in the test in our test project because we, because we didn't, we noted the type of test um, that we were executing. And we should see something in our, our test step here because we did categorize one of our unit tests, our only unit test with that uh, trait to identify it. So did it get picked up by the filter? Total of one tests match the specified pattern and you know, we're, we're running it. There we go. And it passed. So our assert true, true test passed. Surprisingly, you know, was, was a little risky, um, but we got it working and it, and it passed and it only took four seconds to assert true was true. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so there we go. So we have a CI process now, the next step and what I'll do in part four is I'm going to go in and take my C the CI aspects of the process expanded such that, um, in my continuous deployment process, uh, I can actually deploy my code because the CI, the CI process is really only intended for when you are, um, you know, running pull requests on your .NET code and you, you want to verify that your tests pass before you merge into main. Um, once code is merged into main, then the CD process takes over and provisions all those things. So the reason why we have these two, uh, workflows, the CI, 
workflow and the CD workflow have different roles on the project. And so it's important, they, they are gonna do different things um, and it's important to understand why they do different things. The CI process is about doing code, um, verifying the built-in quality of the code and the CD process is about uh, de deploying known good versions of that code out into the, the environment that you, that you wanna deploy it out to. So uh, I hope that helps. Um, we have, so far we have set up um, kind of a, 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 a provisional CD process that, that doesn't do everything it's, it will do. It, it only provisions our environment. Um, we've set up a CI process. Again, doesn't do a whole lot, just builds and runs unit tests. Um, next episode, I'm gonna, be, um, I'm gonna be expanding the CD process to actually take the bits of my Azure function and deploy them out to my environment. So a lot of fun stuff coming with that. Um, if you're enjoying this series, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot. And uh, I hope you like where we're going. Um, we're going to get a fully end-to-end -end working Azure Functions, um, GitHub Actions, CI CD process working, um, where we can go and make this Azure Function do a lot of cool stuff. So um, anyways, that's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.